Okay. Go ahead and uh, begin our budget session today. Certainly. Uh, and we will begin with uh, Chief Duncan and the Police Department. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, we are uh, presenting today our um, annual budget, which is approximately $11,300,000 uh, for this upcoming fiscal year. Um, for our goals, our program goals, we're having some success um, with the program goals that we've had established over the past couple of years to include uh, another implementation of safe streets, um, continued use of uh, ComStat, um, working joint operations with our safe street partners in and around the city, focusing on quality of life improvement um, and other community programs that we're running which include uh, High Point and um, our uh, re-entry project as well. Um, with this, with these stated goals in mind and with this budget that we're allotted, as you know, that monies uh, is earmarked for three separate uh, budgeting platforms. The police department, our uh, sitcom or our radio room, and then our animal control. This year, for um, our clerical staff, we are funded at uh, $529,000. This also includes the positions for Safe Streets Coordinator and our Safe Streets Crime Analyst. Our non-clerical salary line, which is our sworn complement, we are budgeted for $5,370,000. We have one part-time position that is assigned uh, to assist in the quartermaster slot for the year. We've had some increases and decreases in the various accounts, um, and the vast majority of them have remained level. Our uniform allowance, our uniform maintenance um, pricing has gone up to accommodate the additional personnel. Last year we were at 44.4. And this year we're at $48,010 to accommodate the extra personnel. We built in some step increases for our civilians. Uh, as you know, when we did the salary restructure, uh, we left out the vast majority of civilians that are employed in our agency. I am excluding in this group the dispatcher component because that was taken care of during the salary readjustment and then um, in Evergreen as well. So this year we have budgeted $14,600 for step increases for our civilians. Uh, our overtime for sworn members, uh, we are coming in with uh, $287,000 for this year. Our workers comp rate went up slightly. Um, I'm sorry, our workers comp rate went up significantly rather to include um, civilians and sworn. Uh, we had, this past year we were at uh, 326,000, this year we're at 518. Um, some of that is the increase in manpower and some of that is just the increase in cost. We ops also went up slightly. This past year we were at 1,497,000. This year we're at uh, 1,641,000. Again, that's impacted by both increase in manpower and the increase in the LEOPS funding process. Significant increase this year in our accreditation line. Last year, we were budgeted for $4,500, and this was our membership fee, which we are required to pay. This year, we need to increase it to $9,900. Uh, one of the requirements during your uh, tenure between um, reaccreditation processes, which happens every three years, your agency is required to attend one of two annual training conferences. 
this year they are offering a conference in Colorado Springs or Reno, Nevada. Um, we chose Colorado Springs and that's why you see the increase in that budget line. Our testing um, line has also increased. This is for costs associated with um, current employment, uh, promotional testing, pre-employment background investigations. Um, we saw an increase with our psychological testing vendor, an increase by $50 per test, and then our background investigation, which is required uh, for us to conduct credit checks, that has also increased, um, which is why you see the increase from 4,900 to 5,500. Our alarm system out at the uh, firearms range is increasing significantly. Past years, we uh, were budgeted for $650. This year, we're looking uh, at approximately $3,000. Um, this is to change over from Richard Reed Security, which is not a local company, uh, updating all of the equipment, which is essentially original install out there for uh, updating for current uh, requirements out there at the range um, and then we're switching to a local uh, alarm company here in the city, Alarm Engineering. Our maintenance um, and repairs, that's remaining at uh, 27000 Equipment contracts were budgeted this year for 50, uh, 57600 That's an increase up over last year. Additionally, during this budget year, we're going to see uh, PredPol come in for half the year because we were able to pay for that computer database crime analytics processing um, package uh, through current year surplus. So you will see a little jump there because they don't charge until the beginning of the year. Our vehicle maintenance we have slated for 76000 Office supplies we were able to cut a little bit more there at 27000 Janitorial supplies remains the same. Ammunition, uh, last year we were adopted for twenty five, and again this year we're staying at 25000 Protective vests, it's $11,000 this year. Uh, we do get the Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grants, which covers uh, half of the cost, so this represents our share of, uh, of our vest requirement, you see there. Our copiers are remaining the same. Uh, insurance liability has dropped just a little bit by $5,000. <coughs> Uh, our training budget is at uh, 44000 this year. Last year we uh, were approved for 46000 And gasoline we're projecting at approximately 250000 for this coming fiscal year under the guidelines set forth uh, by finance on that. Publications uh, has essentially remained the same, dues are the same. Those are for uh, professional dues and uh, groups that we belong to. Um, everything from the uh, FBI National Academy, Academy all the way up through uh, evidence property uh, groups, professional organizations that we are uh, a member of within the agency. Vehicles, this year uh, we're budgeted for 225000 Uh, for the purpose for the purpose of purchasing five uh, patrol vehicles and outfitting them completely.
Now on to uh, sitcom. Last year, uh, we came in with uh, 481,000. Um, <coughs> this year, we're expecting um, a little bit of an increase there. <coughs> Do you have that in front of you? Is it Kyle? Is that 525? Yes. Confirmed. So, yes. 525,000. Um, <coughs> for our dispatcher room. Their uniforms uh, are not changing as far as price goes. Uh, their night differential is approximately the same. And then over time, um, last year we were fairly consistent, uh, 35,000, this year we're asking for the same. Uh, overtime projects where we would have additional dispatchers include any street operations or joint operations where we need to establish a third uh, seats separate from ordinary business that we would conduct. Uh, this also goes to uh, filling uh, leave time so we have two personnel available to process and handle the calls. Our uh, annual maintenance contracts and uh, upgrade portions for this equipment in the radio room uh, we're budgeted for 48000 this year. Animal control, we are finally back up to uh, uh, two individuals in that position. And um, we have a total budget of uh, 68000 Uniform allowance remains the same for these two uh, members of the animal control unit. And um, we had two trucks that we use for animal control, which are in fairly decent shape. One of them is um, needs an engine replacement, but the body, the chassis, all the equipment, everything associated with it was just fine. So we're just we're working on installing a new engine in that vehicle now and putting that vehicle back out on the road shortly. You're getting one brand new or a used? No, used we're going to use the one we have okay. because it's structurally sound. We just we need a new engine. No, so. I meant the engine is going to be. Brand new, or is it going to be a used engine? Ah, uh, that I'd have to check. Okay. I don't know off the top. Okay. Any questions in particular? Yeah, I have one. Mm -hmm. um, if five one under other attorney mm -hmm. is six eight hundred dollars. Correct. What's the other attorney for? That uh, is for um, a uh, an attorney. Her, her name is Karen Kruger. She is a uh, law enforcement um, specific legal specialist. Um, so when we have disciplinary issues, um, major points of, of contention, lawsuits, things like that, um, she is specific as to law enforcement officers' rights, protocols when it comes to disciplinary actions. Um, and we've used her actually extensively. Time, and this is the first time we've been in, in this department, yes. yes. Okay. But she's because well known we're for We're talking about other attorney. Well, yeah. I think we, before they were coding it under professional services. Right, but this is the first time that we've separated, separated and now, that. And now it's in the other attorney line, that's why you're saying that. Yeah. yeah. But there's still a comment, and this is probably left over under professional services, that the account has increased due to. Uh, contract for private legal counsel. Right. Okay. So that one's left over and it's hard where they're mingled. Has everything been that was legal in the professional services line been moved to the uh, other attorney line now? Um, Keith? Yeah. As far as I know, that's, that, that was the objective that Dave had. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding, yeah. Right. So the 9500 that's in the professional services line is for other things. But here we have 16000 year to date in the other attorney, but we're budgeting 6800 uh, I can't tell prior years what, what it was, so I can't see, you know, the history. Is that, was this a big anomaly year with that, or is that a normal amount, 16000 
What, what, give me the uh, budget line number again. Uh, 513-302, the other attorney. It's on page three, uh, 22. We don't have any actual for 2014 because it was in the other account. And I can't separate out what was legal there. Well, I can tell you that this is the first time that we've contracted um, with this specialized <coughs> attorney. Prior to this, this current year that we're in right now, we had not. And we had um, various disciplinary proceedings, with some of which extended into this current fiscal year that we're in right now, that we needed some guidance on. I'm just wondering if 6,800 is enough. I mean, the drop from we're already at 16. Well, 6,800 actually, her contract price is uh, 7,500, not 6,800. That's her price per annum. Okay, so that. Needs to at least be 7,500, correct? Okay. Keith, do you have? Are you seeing an adjustment at the mayor's level by any chance? Um, <coughs> 75 to 68. Uh, let's speak out. It's um, 513-302, other attorney. No history for 14 and 15. That was, we created that line mm -hmm. specifically yeah, this, for this purpose, this <laughs> but I didn't know if the mayor adjusted it down from 75 to 68. No, you could see if, it, if that was the case, you would. Well, I'm pretty sure the mayor didn't. Uh, I don't recall making any adjustments yeah, there, and I don't, I don't, know, don't why. know why it would be in at 68. But sure so you're saying you need an adjustment to 75? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll double check that. Yeah. Okay, can you do that? Yeah, please. I have no problem with budgeting for this way. No, no, that's no, fine. I was just trying to figure out whether it was. Kind of, we talked about other turning the other day, and this is the first time I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's interesting that we, you know, having other attorney applied in different areas, but. You know, I'd rather Ma see it apportioned Ma appropriately to the Correct. department Probably, where it yeah. belongs and where yeah. it's going to be used yeah. if it's a, an attorney for special purposes that mm -hmm. just lumped together. We yeah. No, that, that, that wasn't my, my no, no, no. no. I understand. Yeah. I just want to make sure there was opposition. Well, we, we had also <laughs> found some, um, just in going through uh, our own manual with respect to uh, discipline, we had found some um, issues that needed to be corrected. And so in order to main, remain consistent with Maryland law, um, and have that um, uh, extend nicely into the Law Enforcement Officer Bill of Rights, we felt it was best if we had a, a, a strong hand uh, guiding us to make sure that we were complying, everything from uh, how complaints are received all the way up to uh, the termination process and everything in between. So you said her contract price is 7500 That's correct. Is, is that like the retainer fee and then the more we use of course we're going to pay more if, yeah if you have so. items beyond that so this is for this is for um, just general questions mm -hmm. um, and it she can work up until that uh, that price and then anything beyond her uh, billable hours she would charge independently so if we had a trial board that extended you know for long periods of time uh, there were negotiations between the two attorneys um, and it exceeded that number, then we'd have to transfer money into that line. That's where I'm trying to figure out what that annual number should be. Yeah. Um, not because well, for this particular, you're talking about this newly established line is um, 13302. Right. So the base contract fee is 5700. Um, we've been we've been pretty critical uh, to, to not go above that unfortunately this past year because um, the mayor had also asked that a, an audit be conducted uh, we had to go above that 7500 to pay for the audit as well but we've gotten through most of the difficult issues and we're up to speed as far as our processes go um, so I would say let this be a clean year and We'll be mindful of that figure. Okay. okay. As long as we all understand that that may require a budget amendment if something comes up that 
I, I think that, that we needed extra money. That, that the way that I would approach that is that's an extraordinary circumstance right. can, that I can deal with mm. on that. If it's something that's routine that should have been in the budget, then I have an issue with it. But I don't have an issue with it that way. So we increase it to 7,500, correct? Yes. Okay. You capture that. 68 to 75. I have <coughs> several other questions. If anyone sure. else wants to go first, or you want me to? I've got an easy one. Okay. okay. I've got one too. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, on the on the workers' comp, uh, you, I understand the, the component of it that it is because of more employees. Um, do you, by any chance, know what the difference in incident rate was between the previous year and this year, which causes rate increases? We have that information, Keith. Or the rate increase for what? What line? The rate increases the just, uh, on the on the workers' comp. Right. You have two components. The one component yeah. is the the cost per employee. Right. And the other one is an increase based on the incident rate year over year. Right. The um, at, at the present time, we we get a uh, a rate that we can quote with until we get an experience factor. Uh, that will be provided in early May. So like in the first week of May, we'll, we typically we, we reduce to the final quoted rate. And in, the, uh, in this adjustment list, you can see last year that amounted to be about $400,000. Right. So right in the early May, we'll get clearance to reduce, and that'll get spread with, among all of the departments, getting it back to likely exactly rate-wise where it was last year. But the quoted amount was the same as it was last year that we quoted with. So no, no, we don't expect an increase. So the, and the rates then are there for are all employees? It's ho ho so the, far it's holding. Oh, we, okay. believe, we believe it's holding, yes, at this time. But early May we'll get, we'll get the real results, uh, first week in May. Okay. It's a nice little windfall just when you think you're... Mm -hmm. Except we've already. Uh, well, I know you've you already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in, in the past it, two right. years, it's been like, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, also, but, I mean, but that's just when it takes you it out. You can go the other way too. I know. I know. <laughs> At least we're aware of it. So they're overstated right now because they're based on the, the stated rate. But that's right. We expect it fall to back. back to yeah. I was more trying to gear it towards the uh, safety performance of the department because obviously the the likelihood of an incident or an occurrence in the chief's department or in either chief's department is probably higher than it would be in the employees that are in the building. I think it's safe to say overall that's because of the, the safety performance of the city overall that we've been able to experience some very significant credits. That's good. Yeah. And you did ask earlier in the week for the frequency rates, and Julia pulled them, and I provided them by way of email just a few minutes ago. Great. The um, rates are down from 18 to 13 second <coughs> quarter of the year compared to the third quarter. So we're down somewhat. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Tim, you had a question? Uh, a couple, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we have any training that goes on that can generate any revenue? I know we send a lot of people other places. Do we have anything going on that people come here? There are two types of training which we conduct. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is for um, the, uh, the Maryland um, Information Database System, so our officers out on the street can uh, run license plates and wants and warrants and things like that. Um, the individuals that operate that platform uh, are trained at SPD and we have the certified instructors to offer that course, although it's not a revenue generating course. The other course that we also uh, instruct is for our tactical teams in the region. Again, it's not a revenue generating structure though. Okay. Do we see any opportunities for We, from set? time to time, we get an opportunity to host training, be a host site for training. Um, and at that point in time, we may get a slot in that class. Uh, but as far as um, offering training in mass, we, we don't have uh, the instructor pool 
um, <coughs> all, all of the agencies in the area kind of give their instructors to the academy uh, so that um, large-scale training can be done that way so we all kind of participate with that so it's coordinated from elsewhere through the through the academy that's correct <coughs> Can you go to the alarm system? I'm not sure how this works. Um, this is 21021. On page 22. What's the next set of numbers? Yeah. Sorry? What's the next set of numbers? Oh, 523607. On page 22. What do we have as the cost of uh, the, the replacement system? I see that it, it, it's, there's a... Well, the new system monitoring, um, new system installation monitoring would be um, approximately uh, $245 <coughs> per month. And then the installation fee for the, uh, for the different upgrades and pieces is $885 there. Yeah, that's a pretty in, uh, big increase in the, well, the Again, the, that, that's an old system you're dealing so with out there? <laughs> yeah. So, actually, what, yeah. I'll put my time to now. And lastly, um, <clears throat> the revenue generated from the new speed camera at uh, Riverside Drive, do we have numbers on that? Um, I had checked that approximately a month and a half ago, and very, very little. Mm -hmm. Very little. That's good. In fact, um, back in the end of February, beginning of March, they, they hadn't uh, received a, a violation. My recollection, which I thought was odd. But. Sort of expected that because of the traffic patterns there, you know, the slowdowns to the light. And what well, was that in that 30 day window where they had to have it up without charging? Or was that part of it? No, that was exclusively. Does that indicate, would that be an argument for moving it? Or Eventually, yeah, but remember, it just got installed, so. Right. But that's what we'll do. You know, they we move them around um, depending on where we're seeing the violations occur after after they come in and do the survey of the area. Okay. You know, they'll have them moved. And there'll be no change. Right now. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. There'll be no change in, in operations during the summer months. As opposed that's correct. To, um, okay. Right. The board of ed had requested when we uh, had the program um, the first installed that we continue operations because of the activities um, that are run on the Board of Ed properties throughout the city throughout the summer. That deal with St. Francis as well? Um, St. Francis did not <coughs> specifically come back to ask us, um, but uh, I do know that you know they're hosting a lot of different things over there. Summer stuff going on there all the time. You know, Camp Odyssey came in last Good. year and I don't know if they're coming back this year, but it's programs of that nature. Um, I'll typically run there. I wonder if you see a spike in the summer because people assume that they don't. That's not. what I was thinking <laughs> just for a moment. <laughs> they're not running. <laughs> You'd be <coughs> interesting to see. I can check that out if you like. That's yeah, just an interesting tidbit. Um, some of my questions have been answered, so I'm all the way up to page 23. And that's good. What the in the detail? What line? The first one is the buildings. 534301. Mm -hmm. There's quite a swing there. Um, was there something that we did this year that we don't anticipate? Or this explains that big drop? Right now the actual is at 90,000, but we're budgeting 27,700 for next year. Right. Um, <coughs> yeah, we had a very difficult year infrastructure wise. All of our HVAC units had been replaced. We had some significant issues with our heating unit. Um, it, it froze uh, once again this year, uh, so that had to be replaced as well. And um, 
we thought that we had mitigated a water problem in our records office. However, uh, what we have found is that when the building was constructed, um, it was not waterproofed correctly. So um, right now we're going to, we're looking at the required excavation around the foundation. Uh, if you're standing in front of the building and you look at the uh, right corner of the building, that's where our records unit is located and that's where the water infiltration is happening. Um, so we, uh, work at, we're working on getting quotes for those repairs and have it waterproofed correctly. Um, if they find, and I suspect that they will find it, that a lack of waterproofing um, continued around the entire building, at some point we're going to have to look at doing the entire thing. Uh, but right now we're just going to get in there, take a look. They uh, believe that um, it was just a, uh, like a, a sheet uh, placed over the foundation itself instead of a, a water seal, uh, which is what has caused the leak in this one area. So we've internally and externally we've had some substantial kind of end of life um, issues related to the infrastructure itself. <coughs> Who was the vendor for that building? Anybody remind, remember? Who built it? It was constructed, construction was finished in 96, 96. on the building. I don't, I'd, I'd have to go pull that. Makes me wonder, are we still doing business with that entity, you know? Yeah, I don't think it was. Yeah. So the, the 2014 number was 36.5. Mm -hmm. um, so that looks like kind of the routine sort of things. And then we've got 27.7 for this year, but that doesn't, so that seems like the everyday kind of things, not including the waterproofing. You're saying we don't have a quote yet to put in there for that. We so. have an estimate of approximately 17,000, uh, but we're not, we, we think that um, that's just for the excavation piece and the, um, and the, and the ceiling. Uh, and then we're going to have to look at the, uh, the interior repairs uh, of the, uh, the cinder block as a, as a separate a quote, which we're working on getting now, so we don't have a total quote. But we are working with uh, with Jen to get that other piece in place. But bottom line, the 27 is probably not going to cut it. No. Correct. <laughs> Good timing, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> he walks right in and says no. This is typically a line that we have to transfer funding into, although um, having replaced every standalone HVAC unit in the building, at least that won't have to be done for a while. Right. Plus we have warranties on all of them, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, still have a question mark there, but... Is there something else I can... Well, no, I mean, just whether... I mean, we're we'll gladly we'll take a new building. So we have on this one. <laughs> well, I mean, I know that I, you're saying you, you usually have to transfer money in there, but Correct. looking Correct. through this, I'm not seeing where you're going to have a lot of room to transfer from. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern. Do we have enough but enough money in there to begin with? Because I don't like Typically saying speaking, we have a balanced budget. Here you go, and knowing that in two months or a month we're going to end up doing budget amendments because we didn't put stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Understood. <clears throat> and the, that's my concern with that one and a few others. But um, the next one I had a, lot, a question on was the very next line for equipment. There is a comment at the bottom that says we're increasing this account due to a new contract. Cred poll. Cred poll, correct. But the budget actually went down, not up. I'm showing a slight increase in that, actually. And then uh, the original, yeah. But the revised fund is at 75, and that was to include the pred poll. I believe that was a budget amendment we did, correct, for the pred poll. Actually, we we, we had revised up to 67, not 75, but um, that's what, and, and we should be at 57, 691 right now. What's the date on your report? Up the left corner. Or maybe. Mine right one up showing 415. They're all the same. Yeah. If I remember right, there were a few accounts that were transferred over to uh, 
she's, got, no, she, she's looking for the thing that, that's, that's on this report. I don't have the date for you. So okay. I think it's the same number that we're showing in the 415 yeah. report. I think initially the account had dropped. And then um, do some discussions with Buddy for next year. We decided to add the Pred Pool in because that came in late about a year. And this year came in late. I mean, it was just it's still in the process of being signed off on uh, the contracts and stuff. So that the 15000 for next year, threw it over again, threw it, threw it back. So that might be a typo. That might be a typo. It was originally it did go down, and then it, it went up because of Pred Pool being added late. I, I don't have a date as to uh, my figure here, but I can tell you that some of these items. Uh, as we as we look deeper into them, were transferred over under a different account, um, more more in line with um, IT as as far as uh, being more specific and trying to be uh, trying to put the these pieces into that. Yeah. Because it, I mean that. What that exactly would you like to know? The equipment, uh, you know. So it's it's kind of all over the place. Uh, History. 2014, 77,000. 2015 original budget 56862. Then our revised, what we're seeing is the 75 number that Laura mentioned. The actual is at 52,000 right now. The 2015 projection is at 95,000, and then the 2016 budget is at 57,000 again. So it's really unclear what the trend is. Yeah. You know, what the reason for the changes are. So if something has been shifted out of that account into somewhere else. That was accounted for yep, in I can let you know. that'd, be, sure. it'd be helpful to know where that went. And clearly, the, the reason sometimes that account is adjusted is because some of the uh, contracts, like for instance, uh, the telephone maintenance contract, mm -hmm. is they only due every so many years. Um, so there might be a spike one year um, because of maintenance contracts being due. And uh, uh, another example might be the. Uh, well, we just had our teletype, um, um, our, our radio communications um, FCC number. That's due. Yeah, there, 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 there may be some th things are, I guess what I'm trying to say is some things are due every X number of years. Right. And there there was a spike a few years ago because there were several like uh, web filters, um, spam filter, that kind of thing that was there. They were all kind of due the, roughly the same time. So. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe maybe seeing that history over time and, and any, like I said, any things that have been shifted out of there. Just some kind of explanation because it just doesn't make sense to me. Can't you show the history on there? I think it w I think it would help if we had just the year and the major items that caused that switch. Okay. And that would be enough to gen then, then if we could see any impact of what that was. Okay. If it's a if it's a uh, license, X number of dollars in the license. And <coughs> okay. That'd be the easiest way. Yeah, I think Shouldn't Keith, take a lot of time. Keith is trying to drill down on it now, but well, he's yeah. not going to get. I don't, I don't think, think you're going to get the high detail there. Oh, yeah. I would, I would yeah, slow down. That that's not going to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next line, the five thirty four three zero eight vehicles. The, it's the comments are about the aging vehicles and mm -hmm. and the additional funding in there. Um, but again, it looks like it's reduced. Is that because of our, our new vehicles, the number of new vehicles we have and comments are left over maybe? Well. Uh, or do we actually need one? Right. This, this particular line, um, we had asked for uh, seven and we're operating, we're now, our budget is now uh, showing five. So that's one of the reasons that it was reduced. Additionally, when you look at past years, too, there was a, a larger push because of the condition that most of the vehicles were in in 2010 and 11. There were higher purchases because we were purchasing more vehicles at that time. Okay, is this vehicle purchases or vehicle maintenance? It's common like really. yeah. Vehicle purchase and the equipment. The equipment for those new vehicles comes out of the same line now. Mm -hmm. Vehicle maintenance is in a separate line. But that's further down. That's in the capital line. You're, you're looking at 57, 7025, right? Now I'm looking at 53, 53, 53 4308. Mm -hmm. On page. Page 23. 23. Middle of And it says vehicles, but it looks like vehicle maintenance. Mm -hmm. Vehicle maintenance, 534308. 50, <coughs> yes. Right. Seventy-six thousand. Yes. Yes. We couldn't budget for more than that because of the uh, the restraints of having to stay within the um, with the 
flat budget and put a bed bottom on it. Oh, man. I know, may I have to go a second? I noticed, <laughs> I went by, and I never really looked at the cars you had parked on the extra parking lot. Mm -hmm. The windows are all gone. Mm -hmm. Those are slated for auction. Those oh, are slated okay. for surplus. We've already surplus those through the process. process. The windows were there when we parked them there. They were there. They were there. <laughs> I thought I figured that. But, but they're um, all the windows are gone. It's about, how many cars? It's about seven in there. Six. Six. Mm -hmm. That's all those cars are. Which lot is We're talking vandalism. The gravel lot. Vandalism, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They get vandalized in the gravel lot. Yes. Do we have uh, cameras on those areas? The dentist's teeth, man. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I saw the place. I said, my God, what happened to these windows? I just had no the street down there. there. I haven't been paying it no mind, but I just had to look up so you see it. We had a so few. I thought we were going to replace all those cars. Well, we had a few. They, well, they're slated for a surplus. In fact, oh. I think they have a surplus. Yeah. yeah so we, how many is there? Six, you say? Yeah. Six. And right. you wanted five. Well, they got six that's not running. So you can't give them this, the cars. You look at those cars. Because you want it, you want it seven, and you get five. Right. Well, we're we're still, we're still, getting the ones that you approved last year. They're still on their way okay. to us, presumably <coughs> once again through <coughs> Australia. Separated. Where? Literally. So where? Australia. Australia. Oh, oh, Australia. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where they're being the manufactured. Fosters. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee. Down under. That's right. Oh, All right, so uh, this was, um, <coughs> do you know what the original requested amount was? 120000 Of course, they have the kangaroo leather seats. <laughs> 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 seat. Before we started getting at the rotating some of the in the last three years, two or three years actually, our maintenance uh, budget was I think around the highest we hit was about 185,000, 189. We were able to reduce that through the influx of the new vehicles, but it's going to require about 120,000 to maintain the fleet this year. Yeah, and that's that's consistent with 2014 and the tar what it looks like we're on target for for 2015. I think that's accurate. And we weren't able to request any more because of the. We just couldn't cut from another any other account. Right, I understand, and, and that that's why I'm asking these questions: is where are we, where do we not have money that we should have money? That's my approach with this. To, do we have what we need here? Um, right, so that one. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I'll let me go down to the next page. Uh, operating. This one was which, which <laughs> line? Um, page twenty-four. It's uh, five forty-six zero zero six. I think that's a six anyway. I don't know what's going on. I think this has to do with the the expired POs, a negative number out there for the twenty fourteen actual. Um, so I don't know what we actually spent, but the. Actual for 2015 is 15,000, and it says mayor level reduction of $14,000 down to $2,800. Yeah. How is that? 2845. Work. Yeah. It's not going to work. I mean, well, we're they're going to tell you that it's not going to work, and we're going to tell you that there's only so much money to go around. So, um, not sure how we get past that. Uh, with the 2014 actual. I think that's probably expired. Season, I think Keith's trying to look yeah. at some of this. Once we cleaned up, would have left a. It's the only thing I could think of made it look like that. Uh, it was an inventory adjustment, and that's where the, uh, the inventory adjustment hits. Okay. Adjust books to actual. The end of 14. So we had more on hand than we thought we did. That year. So that it goes both ways. Yeah. Right, right. Well, what was the actual expenditure that year? Without that, if you take that, uh, add 37 back. Okay, so, so. About, about on track. I'll just 
just don't see how that happens. Could you put that on the revisit list, please, as well? Mm -hmm. On that line, Doug, I see batteries is in there. Does that include batteries for your radios, et cetera, et cetera? No, not in that line. Just, we're talking no, just double A's and correct. double A's and whatnot. Okay. Correct. If I remember right, I think we're budgeted where we tried, we asked for 18. I think generally we'd be, I'd have to look at the history, but I think, uh, I think we, I think we always ask for a, new, uh, a transfer into that account each year. We're in operating? Mm -hmm. in, in, in operating. Correct. Yeah, you can see the last two years, in 13, there was 1,200. Transferred in 14, 2600, 15, five has been transferred in. So I think we, we averaged about 22,000, 23,000. So the original request was, uh, what did I say, 14, 16, 16, 16. And I think that was another account that, because of a flat budget, we had to just decrease in certain areas, unfortunately. But I think we'll actually need around 20, 22, 20, 22 23,000. Need Thank you. Um, skip down a couple to the AN supply. I'm not sure what that is. Um, what number? Five forty six zero one zero. Animals. Animal supply. Okay. Yeah. This one, I read in here that we were going to try to get a second canine. Would that be grant funded that would cover? Because this one's already a little bit below what we have year to date for animal supply. Right. So if we add another canine in there, I would expect that to see that go up, not down. Well, we have two canines right now. One is patrol and one is a uh, drug, narcotics dog. Um, the narcotics dog was purchased through uh, the um, Winter. Yeah, our um, task force coalition that we're a part of, through the narcotics task force. <coughs> so the comments that I, I'm not sure where I saw it, but are we looking to add another dog this year, another K-9? Uh, we would do that if uh, Wintiff had okay. the funding for that. Okay. Um, all right. Now the vest, the equipment main line 546012. It's two lines down from that one. I have a comment here, tactical bulletproof vest, $8,000. Is that accurate number for per vest? Per vest? No. No. Or was that multiple vests? Right. Okay. These are, and these are the heavier. The new models. The heavier pieces. Right. Because yeah. that was reduced and then we moved it to, or reduced to zero, because we moved it to the next page under the protective vests. So, how much are the actual vests? They're about five hundred and fifty to five hundred seventy-five dollars. I think there's an increase that's going through right now. It's about five hundred seventy-five dollars a piece. That's for the heavier. level level two vests that the officers wear. The heavier vests are about eighteen hundred piece. Is it starting out with fifteen, or is it? Uh, we need to buy fifteen. It says. And then every year after that. Every every year we rotate right. because they have a five-year life expectancy. The vest. Does. This is the level two. This is what you see the officers on the street wearing. Right. Um, about every five years they have to be rotated. The level three vest, which is what our tactical unit wears to, for search warrants and so forth, mm -hmm. level threes cost about $1,800 a piece. Yeah. So every so often they are also have a life expectancy also. We are in need of <coughs> several of those vests this year. So which ones of those do we have to, re how many of each do we have to replace this year? I think the uh, level threes, I think the TAC team is asking for 11. But and that's I think I have some, uh, I'm working on some grant funding to obtain some of those vests. How are those disposed of once they've reached their life expectancy? I don't believe we have ex um, disposed of any of them as of yet. So they usually sit back in the quartermaster's office because we uh, don't really have a mechanism in place to put those back out. And the, there's a liability there if you... Technically, they're no, no longer good. Right, there's a liability there too. So, um, release them in some other fashion other than destruction and mm -hmm. um, we haven't done that. 
How about the five hundred and fifty dollar bus? Uh, Again, we, we keep those as well. We usually try to replace. We're on a schedule to replace about fourteen to fifteen a year. Okay. But now, this this particular account account represents fifty percent because we have a federal and state grant uh, provided. It's it's renewed each year that pays for the other fifty percent. So of that five fifty or five seventy, the city uh, the city actual cost is just half of that. Unless we run out of grant funding and we need the best, and then we have to, you know, front the whole. Uh, we, we usually try to ask for about this, about the equal amount that we'll be getting in grant funding. Okay. I think I just lost some. Okay. Uh, I'm almost on this way. Compro, it's on page 27, 569, 200. Special request for community project, $35,000. That's Poplar Hill pre release. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't sure what that was. And could we get, in years past, we've gotten the schedule of vehicle replacement to kind of know years of mileage and, and all that. We could get a copy of that. That would be great. Okay, now I'm down in the on page 33. It's switched over to traffic control. <coughs> traffic control? Oh, I'm sorry. That's not you. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Um, the one other question that I had <coughs> was on postage, and this is a minor one. Mm -hmm. Are we still sending letters when there's uh, like? Yes, we've replied to a party violation, something like that, to the property yes, owners. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Any other questions? I have one more. Shane. Since, um, and I don't know where to call, I had mentioned um, earlier on, I think I called um, our text the mayor to put in the budget. I don't know if it could come under community pro promotions or from the police um, to add a thousand dollars or more to uh, project uh, be followed through the police department for better community relations with the, the youth. What would they come under? Um, because we talked about how we build the relationship, the community the promotions. Well, if it would be managed by the police department, it'll be managed by the police department where they can take the kids to a game, a game, you know, that kind of okay. stuff. It should be on the police. Remember, I was yeah. talking about that. Yeah, we've got some good breaks on that. Yeah, some funding. First. No, 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 I asked no. funding from the city. Okay. I asked for the being in community promotion. And I don't know if it's in community promotion, but but I just so happened to see the community project made my mm -hmm. mind trigger. No. And I, I suggest at least a thousand dollars to like take oh, kids to a game, like Shorebirds game or something. Oh, Two buck Mondays. Help the help the. <laughs> What? Two but two dollar Mondays on the, I'm to the game. So. I'm probably out of town. Oh, okay. Two ball. I call for Oreo games. Oh, I see. Okay. And 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 we're to build a relationship between the police and the. And the Do you want us to add it as a possible adjustment? Yeah. Okay. And I want to make sure it gets in there at least a thousand. Consideration. So, uh, what line was that? Community promotions. I don't know what word sure would be. That's why I'm asking. It might ultimately end up there. Yeah. 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 Right. But we wanted to be funneled through your department. So I'll leave it as a decision that the council is going to make. Uh, That's a decision on that. Okay. I'll leave that out. Put it in there as a possibility. Well, the mayor, mayor, the mayor agreed to it, so I don't know if he's changed his mind. I guess my only other question is, loaded blanket question, is there anything else that isn't in here that we're not seeing that we should? And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm seeing things that we. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Actually, we're, we're good. Cars made in America. <laughs> well, made in America. I mean, they are made. You know, they're they're American-made cars. They're just contracted out in Australia. Still want to get out here by four o'clock. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I thought we were going to see the original requested information this year, and I don't. I haven't found that, so I have to ask. Well, uh, one one of the uh, one of the issues that we always struggle with, you know, is is the overtime. <laughs> And that's going to be a problem moving into uh, this next fiscal cycle. Um, but in order to comply, you know, with the level bud budget message, level funding message, and um, still get all the things in, we had to reduce that. The uh, non-clerical retirement. That would be for sworn. Yes. Well, because even if even if we are able to reduce the dependence on overtime to do special patrols and things like that, if um, through the hiring of more officers through the creation of more positions, there will always be a need for special events, court time, you know, any any of those things where it's going to require overtime. So. Right. I guess I guess the, the goal would be to move toward that figure ultimately and ensure that we're we have the, the correct staffing to allow that to happen. I don't know that we're there yet. Yeah. Yes, I had it highlighted and it had the merit level reduction for the um, to offset chief reclass and you you kind of explained what those reclassifications were so I I didn't really say much but FY14 was 400 over 400,000 and uh, projected for this year is 300, but we're just about at that. I did want to ask though, how is it going with the coordination with the courts and oh, good. not having the officers there? Is that, the, yeah, that's working out. Um, that's a lot. What happens <laughs> with that is that uh, when a case first comes over, attorneys review it uh, and they may call, they may end up calling all of the officers involved in that case, but then as it uh, it's closer to the trial date, they usually wave off, they call the officers up and, and don't have them respond in. So that's actually working quite well. You're not seeing large decreases in that, but it's it's every little penny counts. Right, right. And well and the big decrease I think was from I think we start you started working on that at eleven or twelve, probably FY twelve, thirteen. So we we probably already saw the biggest bang for that. In that particular Section right. yes right we're for for we're from to that, court those efforts yeah right. Um, right so we've realized all the savings we're going to see out of that basically but we're still doing our fifty thousand calls for service per year oh, and sure. the state's attorney's office in total is still prosecuting about five thousand cases per year so it's it's there right but I'm saying they're they're working with us as much as they can we Absolutely. can't get it we can't squeeze any more out of that. <coughs> What was the requested amount for the overtime? Just curious. Four hundred and twenty. I think it was four twenty. Sorry, it's okay. Yeah. You, you, you might need that way. You might need that way. Our history has definitely trended upward, starting with two thousand and five uh, to present day. There's been a several hundred thousand dollar increase over that time period. Is any of that offset by, I mean, I know some of it's created by the shortages at the unfilled positions. Some. Some of it can be offset by that as well, but when you fill those positions, you're still going to have overtime. Well, have that you extra. know, you might actually, um, and if memory serves me correctly, I think we went over this um, during the, uh, when we were discussing the additional officers. You might initially actually see an increase in overtime expenditure because you've got all, all this additional personnel and they're all, you know, making arrests and going to courts, but it, that will level off. Once they're in the proper place to, pre you know, prevent the crime from happening in the first place, you're not going to see the expenses associated with the investigation of, say, an assault, which could cost us up to $1,500 just to investigate that one crime. Uh, if there's an arrest, if there's overtime associated with court costs or uh, holdovers to fully investigate it or bring in additional manpower. Mm -hmm. So each crime really has a cost associated with it, has a man hour application to it. Sure. Okay. We understood the need, but we were 
hoping that the police department could do their best to work within the confines of the three hundred thousand dollars that is budgeted understanding that some of the um, variables might be bringing on new staff that sort of thing and then the um, cooperation with the state's attorney's office that we could work within the three hundred three hundred thousand dollar range and if we needed to revisit it later in the year we could I understand I just want to make sure that we understand the need to and are making informed decisions about those trade-offs okay Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Yes, just a, a clarification and, and a request, possibly. When uh, going back to workers' compensation, which is a huge number, um, two, in 2014, the actual shows $239,000 in this department. I'm trying to look at the bigger, bigger picture, but just as an example in this department, would that include the refund or the increase from the pre that's calculated during the year? Would that be a net number? That's a net number at the end. Okay. So it wasn't. And then the so in the uh, in the revised budget for 2015, does that number include an assumed uh, refund? The revised budget for 15 did it, it was the was had been reduced it, it, before it got adopted it got reduced and then so the original budget included included the uh, the reduced amount okay yeah. and the 519 it's in there for 2016 yes mm well that'll get adjusted that not, that, that's that's, that's good that's, the adjustment. Adjustment. that's good that's, be, that's before the adjustment okay. that's good. Yeah. Okay. it would be possible to get one one analysis not just by for this department mm -hmm. but for workers compensation I'd like to see the history for the last five years of the adjustment the final adjustment just that number for going back five years to see what that would that that will give us two different things, but I'd like to see that number for the city, mm -hmm. not for the not by department. Yeah, because the year before it was like close to a million dollars, or a couple several years ago it was close to a million dollars. Last year it's four hundred. Yeah, so that's kind of. Is that something we can pull again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's two two adjustments. One is to the budget. Yeah, and then secondly, even at the end of the year, we get a we get an audit, and then we get an audit adjustment. Right. So you you were talking about the, the budget adjustment? Budget adjustment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and the the same thing I would assume happens. We're part of the county's health system, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Uh -huh. The same thing happens with the health since we're semi self insured. Correct. We get a settlement. Can, a settlement. Can right. you give me we the settlement numbers for workers' compensation and health insurance? Sure. Right. Thank you. We hope to get a settlement. Yeah, we. <laughs> in our favor. Yeah, right. <laughs> not, yeah, right. Not pay up. Um, that reminds me when we were going through the city court, and uh, I think mayor's office, we saw a reduction in health insurance. And you said that went down, but I think that must have been only for that department because I've seen the others go up, maybe a change in plan or something like that. Okay. Yeah, but it had to have been a plan change because okay. the health health rate held held uh, constant. Okay. So all premium rates. Yeah. Okay. So any increases were additional personnel or change, change in plans? Change, change, change in plans. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Let me ask a question about animal control officers and their uniforms. Um, do you? Mm. I see if they're uh, reimbursed, perhaps, for at uh, three hundred and twenty dollars <coughs> per year. This is for uniforms, equipment, and purchase of shoes. Do you have any specific amount that you dedicate towards shoes in a given year, or is it just a general? No, amount? it's a general amount. Okay. That we're given. Because I'd like to see each one of these guys have at least two pairs of shoes that they can wear during as opposed to one pair every day, all the time. That's what we did a couple of years ago. It was noted in most of the most of the accounts that got yeah. 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 
So to be clear, you, you want me to um, revise the uniform allowance to include purchase well, I to think we have a, a uniform line. I think a, a good uniform line. Yeah, there is. Six hundred six. Page thirty-one. So I, I don't. Six hundred forty dollars. I don't think you would. I don't think we would do a, a uniform allowance line. I think we just go with the uniform line. I think they have the money there to pay for that. Out of the police uniform line. Yeah. Well, they have their own, they have their own line. Under two one eight two nine. Uniform purchases. Yeah. And we do for what for public works? It's it's close to two hundred dollars, isn't it? Two hundred. I'm sorry. Yes, two hundred dollars per pair. I mean per year. Per year, right? Per employee. Mm -hmm. well, why do you need two pair of shoes? Uh, because you can when you're working all day, sweating in one yeah. pair of shoes, you shouldn't step into the same pair of shoes. Yeah, because they're wet. And was public works only two pair of shoes too this year? Yeah, it's every they year. They have been. Yeah. We, we did that every year, three or four years. I encourage them to get two pairs. It's up to them to you know, spend the two hundred dollars wisely. But it's a reimbursement. It's not. They don't get a check. No, no, you know, yeah. no. But you get a real nice pair of work for a hundred bucks. But some of them, yeah, they're slogging around and who knows what, and they and need to dry end, out before you put them back on. Yeah, and it you know it keeps it, it doubles the wear of the shoe as well. And I would say the same thing for the for the animal control guys. Those guys are on their feet pretty much the entire time. Just two. Just two. Okay. Hmm? So I'll have to end the animal control. Sorry, I did have one more, but it wasn't really for chief. I I need a clarification okay. on that. Are you talking two pair of shoes for each police officer? Or we just no. I'm just talking yeah, about yeah, animal control right. at this point. Okay. Yeah. You know, if we could do the same thing we do for public works, yes. that would be great. You know, dedicate two hundred dollars a year. What well, about shoes police officers? Uh, they go through about a pair a year. Depends on the assignment. Right. Somewhere you know, the tennis shoes for the bike patrol. Bike patrol is oh, a little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah. They're about a hundred dollars okay. a pair. Okay. Then you have the uh, can't wear the traditional boots <coughs> and uh, tactical team wear the boots for their tactical operations. Mm -hmm. And the patrol will usually wear work order. We go through the, and this is uh, more a request for a follow up for our annual machination with the Indian Society and the contract status on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's get, busy, let's get busy with that puppy, shall we? <laughs> Still one's under. But I think it's going to be a closed session. <laughs> I think. Well, it's actually on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the contract may be closed session, but it's on pending items. Mm -hmm. Remains yes. on pending. Yeah. Uh, I just had yeah. to so. We're working with purchasing to put an RFP out on, on that. So. Okay. Appreciate and once we get a which, handle, which is actually huge progress. I mean, the fact that we're getting to the point where we have, where we know that where we have some reasonable expectation that there can be a response from anyone other than the main society. Yeah. yeah. It's progress. It's <laughs> progress. And once we get that information, I think. Finalize my draft of the new animal control ordinance. So, yeah, so we can get that before us as well. It's just cleaning it up pretty much. Anything else in there that don't even exist anymore? Can I can I just get some yes. clarification? I have um, three different lines that I owe you some additional information on. Uh, one of them is uh, our equipment line. Yes. Uh, the second one is our operating supplies line. The next one is our vehicle maintenance schedule. And then uh, the two pair of shoes for our animal control officers. Is there, I think I tracked everything. Yeah, because I think I Keith think will have the, the yeah, workers' comp stuff. The workman's comp and uh, the workers' mm -hmm. comp. Keith will handle that. Okay. And the health insurance. So yes, yes. I think that covers it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, thank, thank you, you both. Chief. And those would be working shoes. We don't want them to see any patent leathers. <laughs> I understand. Thank yeah. you, Carl. I don't think they have control lines. They're going to go out. You don't look like you followed the instructions. Yeah, I didn't need to. I'm just trying to get one. I know. It, this is the first time I looked like the first time, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just reaction. It's like, it's like <laughs> fell asleep. Thank you, I was rushing. Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. The council 
pleasure to be here this morning or this afternoon now. Uh, seems like all morning. For, for Shaney, it was all morning. <laughs> <laughs> so people just can't follow us. Right? It's just great. Just great. Just uh, <laughs> thankful to be here. Um, with council approval, I'd like to accomplish my presentation in two in two different things. One, go through the uh, the proposed budget and just discuss the changes that uh, we have requested. The mayor has implemented his budget, and then entertain council questions as it relates to the budget and then because the because the mayor has the mayor has been very gracious in allowing me to make an additional presentation to the council my final comments will be based on a presentation we will present to council on one of the initiatives that the fire department is has been trying to put forth for a number of years now and we're uh, we're, we're finally able to with the, with again with the with the grace of the mayor to present to council and we're we're very excited about the opportunity to do that so is that okay with you mr president yes all right so if we'll just go through the budget there were very few um, uh, increases and decreases in the fire department's budget this year and um, with with council approval I'll go through them line by line um, I will not uh, venture into the personnel services accounts since most of those accounts with the exception of the overtime budget and part-time lines were controlled by finance at this point uh, we have not asked for an increase in our overtime line nor our part-time line um, we based on our projections we looked like we were going to be okay I will tell you, since we've submitted our budget, our part-time line is exhausted, 100% exhausted, and our, and we are crashing into our projected surplus in our overtime line. So we are going to be very close to the end of the year, and we'll manage it to the best at the best of our ability to get to that to get to that end goal of being the end of the year. But there was there were, we we asked for no increase because at the time we presented the budget, we were in very good shape. So we'll move down to the general operating lines, uh, beginning with our medical line, which is 513040. Uh, we had requested a very small increase of $2,250 to that uh, based on the addition of the four positions that we had increased in FY15, uh, mid-year FY15. Landscaping and ground maintenance, which is 523604. Again, another small increase um, as it relates to this expense account of $2,015. Uh, the reason for the increase is that our vendors, since the economic turndown, our vendors had been doing their very best to hold level pricing over those over those uh, stressful times. And this is year four, and they're not willing to hold their prices anymore. So we went out and we, we acquired uh, bids for uh, landscaping services, and the lowest um, the lowest bid that we had received was 69.15. So it required this increase of $2,000, $2,015 just based on what we had received quotes on from the vendor. Who is that vendor? True Vine. True Vine. It has been, they've been the vendor that has been holding their prices for the last four years, and they, they still came in at, as a low price. Uh, the, next, the next increase was to our janitorial services account in the amount of $2,708. Uh, again, based on the same the same thing where they had been holding their prices and over several years, and they just simply said they could not continue to hold the price. So there's a very marginal increase in providing janitorial services to clean the facility. Well, they're seeing minimum wage increases too. So correct, just, you know. correct. And I, and I we're really appreciative that our vendors have worked with us over these many years, these few years to really hold the prices uh, because of the economic conditions that we face. Sizable increase to our buildings account. Uh, Council will, I'm sorry, that is account number um, 534301, a $15,000 increase requested. Um, council may recall that we'll, we'll look in the history and see that in FY15, our actual is much higher than what our original was, and that is because we had to make some internal budget transfers to uh, pay for a, a, a catastrophic failure of our air conditioning system in uh, Fire Station 16 and Fire Headquarters. Um, we, we had realized, uh, after, after the fact, we had realized that because of the reductions in our budget since 2008 in our general operating accounts, we had made several reductions to our budget because of the economic turndown. One of the losses that, we had not rec that, that I had not recognized that had occurred over that time was we had stopped paying for our uh, service maintenance contracts for uh, HVAC oh. systems. And because we had not done that, um, we realized, we, we, we feel that that was the probable cause for the failure of our HVAC system. So this $15,000 increase is to rectify that so that moving forward we, we do a preventive maintenance contract with our vendors 
and make sure that our, our equipment is maintained in peak operating order. And that fifteen thousand dollars is for a year's worth of it, it, it is. It is. It's it's both for it's for a preventive maintenance contract as well as a computer monitoring contract where they access remotely our um, HVAC system and can make adjustments and and sometimes they can service it just from their current location Chief, without that, making a call. I'm sorry. Is that five thousand dollars a building? No, it's fifteen thousand dollars for the entire for the entire uh, fire station sixteen and fire headquarters building. Okay, so only for station sixteen. Station 16. Yeah. Now hold, let me let me let me go to the subject matter expert for a second. Chief, does that include stations one? Station one. In the in the in the air conditioning yeah. insert, it, so it includes station one. We will we have not included station two because of its it life expectancy. Coming down. Yeah. It's <laughs> life expectancy. <laughs> so, but but we will we will we will more than likely have an increase in FY six uh, seventeen to uh, realize that station two's monitoring as well. Okay. Well, it should be under warranty for a couple of years. It will. So it will be. Like a few years out. And then the only uh, there are two very other uh, increases. We'll turn to uh, account number um, 546023, which is fire prevention supplies. Um, it is an increase due to our additional efforts in fire prevention activities, displays, neighborhood saturations efforts, et cetera. Um, because we have uh, been actively engaged in the neighborhood saturation efforts um, that we, we are so excited about, as well as our increased efforts in our after the fire program and our fire prevention activities. Um, we have, we're have we buying smoke detectors and batteries and other fire prevention safety equipment and supplies to give to our citizens. And and, and that, that increase is very nominal based on, we've held that $5,000 number for, for many, many, many years and we've asked for a slight increase there because we've increased our activities in fire prevention. Do we just do, I'm sorry, do we just do smoke detectors or do we do uh, carbon CO2? We do not do CO. CO. Or CO. We don't do I CO. I meant CO as well. Okay, CO2. yeah, two, two, <laughs> T O O. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, uh, we do not do CO. We will do a check, mm -hmm. but they're they're very expensive, and 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 it's really it's really cost prohibitive for us to be yeah. in that business. I thought I also some grants. The combination like ones are just as expensive. They're just they're just really yeah. So what we're doing is we're purchasing uh, up to date encode. Um, smoke detector with a 10 year shelf life, which is what they're expected to live. Uh, and then we'll replace batteries as well. We did have several years ago an in-kind donation of fire. We still do. Uh, we still do. The state fire marshal's office manages a grant opportunity through uh, various vendors, Lowe's, Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Primarily in our area, it's been Lowe's. Uh, I'm sorry, Del Marva Power. Uh, has been uh, very gracious in their in their donations of smoke detectors across the state, um, uh, and and we have been the recipient of those. This is the it's it's just not enough to get us through the year, so we have to we have to purchase several. I thought at some point Sapoa had given a bunch of smoke detectors to to uh, the fire. You, you know that that does come to my recollection, but I cannot remember what the details of the. But it, it does it does come to my recollection. Yeah. It's a phenomenal yeah, Hardware. Ace Hardware also made a, 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 a contribution of smoke detectors and batteries to us to do one of our saturation efforts. So we've been we've been marketing our mission, and several of our local vendors have been been very kind and generous in providing those donations. Good. Keep on soliciting. We will. We will. And then the 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 last uh, increase to our operating accounts is in our telephone account, and that was simply based on uh, a recommendation from finance, based on uh, rating. Uh, per, I think it was a four percent possible rate increase over telephones. Five hundred seventy dollars. So that was the five 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 four zero one account. Then the only other items uh, that I'll I'll address with council. I'm sorry, there are a few others in electricity, natural gas, and gasoline. There are several. Uh, there are slight increases and one decrease in our gasoline account based on on our, our current use, our expected usage, uh, as well as the decrease in gasoline and, and diesel fuel prices. The uh, a substantial increase in our new lease payments. Uh, that's prime. That is because of the the, the increase of our, pur our purchase of three brand new ambulances. The, and the estimated lease payment is nine hundred ninety nine thousand three thirty three. Again, that's an estimate. We'll find out more as the real, true, and final cost of the units come in, and we find out what that lease payment schedule is. But it's important to understand that we also decreased our existing lease payments by two hundred seventy eight thousand two hundred nineteen dollars and fifty four cents. So so. 
we're actually to the positive in increasing and decreasing our lease payments in this particular case. This might be a stretch of the grant purpose, but Heal Cities, I'll send you the email um, that we're a part of, has a grant opportunity for up to $9,000 for community wellness. And that, we might be able to find a way to kind of tweak that around. <laughs> Heal, 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 H E A L, cities, cities. Um, I would expect our grant application to have something to do with healthy food. That's not that. Yeah. No, so I was thinking the community gardens, but uh, they had some smaller grants as well. So, um, I'm not going. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm much healthier than not being all <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Other questions? Jack. Chief, do we have, um, all, are all of our EMS units uh, have a power lift? Um, they do not. Uh, the stretchers, stretchers themselves are power lift stretchers. All of them? Yeah, yes. It, it, I'm correcting that, right? We have, we have those. We purchased those a number of years ago. Okay. Our, our, our desire is when we spec out our new ambulances to have the, uh, you may be aware of the new power lift systems where it actually lifts the pay, it lifts everything for you. There is no lifting by our providers. Right. Now that's about a thirteen, thirteen thousand dollar upgrade. But if as we look as we look at the uh, exposure to our our in our injury in our injury statistics over back injuries and twisting and and shoving injuries, that that really is that really is cost preventative for us. And when you do that, we check with the compensation carrier because that is one of those things that. You know, it's like when you put smoke detectors, right. mm -hmm. that's one that's a high one or a high in terms of our liability. Yeah. That's our goal. That's yeah. our goal. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so long as so long as we can purchase or uh, specify the the unit, and it comes in under budget, we're 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 definitely going to do that. Good. You no longer use pagers, do you? We do. We do use pagers. Um, we, we, matter of fact, mine is over there on my little briefcase, turned off, so it wouldn't interrupt us. But we, we do use uh, fire department pagers for sure to alert our volunteers, as well as some of our, some of us uh, antiquated people that want to get alerted after hours, maybe. <laughs> and that's still cost effective for you. It, it is. It is. It's uh, you know the, a pager is five hundred dollars, give or take a few dollars, um, and and they have a pretty good life. My pager is probably eight to ten years old, so. And it sure beats the sirens at the fire station. Sure, it's <laughs> what we still hear. Though. But I don't know. Not as we're, much. We're incrementally changing that. As each fire station gets replaced, they go away. Right. So. And um, cell phone notifications. A little slow. A little it's, slow. It's, it's it's yeah. These the 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 paid fire department pagers are real time alerting as the tones that the central 911 sends out. Right. It opens up the pager and alerts us. Uh, it, the cell phone notification and pager notification is really dependent on the communication center hitting an additional button. Sometimes they do it immediately. Sometimes they do it. Oh, I forgot to hit the button, and it's just not. It's just not. Uh, it's not a reliable system at this point. Okay, but it's a it's a it's a personnel backup. issue, not a not an equipment. Not that the cell towers or relay is slower. It's just remember remembering. Yeah, generally. That's like my voicemail system on my phone provider. It's like, you, know, you get the voicemail two days later. <laughs> or text messages <laughs> two <laughs> days later. Like, yes, That's yes, a, what? I'm sitting right here with you. <laughs> one of those last things. It um, is good for addresses, though. Yes. It is. If you admit when you're. That's the, that's the yeah. one thing that's good for I, I, I like my thing. pager because yeah, I, I, I have to get to the firehouse. Yeah. I have a playback feature, so I push a button and it repeats what they said. So I, okay. I hit it and it'll tell me, it'll repeat it. So th that's an option as well. So. Okay. Um, again, I have questions. Oh. I feel like Radio Shack. Or like I should be at Radio Shack, I guess. I have lots of questions. Um, in the salary line for non clerical, in the budget message in, in the other pretty document, it said there were six additional firefighters added. Is, but I'm not sure that I'm seeing that in the financial numbers in that line, the uh, 501002. I think what the mayor was making reference to there were the two positions that were unfrozen and the four positions that were added. 
in, in, in FY15. Yes, in 15. Okay. But, but it's, not, it's not added in 16. Well, let me get to that page, sorry. I thought I had it on there. On page 5 electronically, it's, it's got, or, sorry, four new firefighters. I think the mayor's just calling to people's attention that uh, there's four over what was originally proposed in 15. So for this okay. first year, so there were a full four. So that's uh, reflection eight. and not a plan. That's really more of a reflection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, gosh, thank you. Um, this is more for probably Tom or, or Keith, but I'm curious about the uniform allowances. I see it in a lot of different departments. But I see different amounts, and I see them. Some are going up, some aren't. And I'm wondering if maybe we should look at what the uniform allowances and contracts are citywide, and see if we can't get a better deal by contracting with one company rather than each department doing it individually. And I was curious about the uniform allowance for PD versus FD. Specific to they're they're pretty much so far it's decentralized as far as yeah. how that goes they're all managing that mm -hmm. the departments are managing what they feel they need mm -hmm. for okay I just saw where some of them were increasing some weren't and, and they, it seemed they, to be a lot they, of fluctuation if, if they if they want more they just they put more in and then it gets mm -hmm. evaluated at in in the sessions that we have you know the department sessions to make sure everybody feels like they're okay and then they're put through yeah not so much in buying them but in the, in the maintenance the cleaning of them yeah where they're they're having them cleaned i, I see a lot of difference there and I'm, that's where i was thinking if we had one cleaner that was doing them on contract we might see some savings rather than each department just taking them to the dry cleaner or wherever yeah, it's, it's something we could certainly look into yeah. and it may some of the difference may be the um, the type of soiling or whatever that's yeah. occurring in you know, public works versus and, and not notwithstanding what the police department discussion was just a minute ago um, that includes our sh shoe allowance as well that that's okay. it's all inclusive so it's not just cleaning it's the purchase of shoes right right I was that was just something that came yeah. to mind that we might yeah. be able to find some savings there and, and that's not an urgent thing but I wanted to mention it while we're in this on your medical line, 513-040 on page 35. 513-040. Um, 513-040. Yep. Yep. You, you touched on that. And I see a mayor level reduction of $17,000. It's an increase based on the addition of four new positions um, and the funds for pre-employment fit for duty physicals and personnel. And this is when I was thinking there were four new positions being added. So is this a leftover comment or what? No, I'm it is. It is because the positions were added mid-year 15. Mm -hmm. It was not budgeted in FY 15 for those posi those four positions to receive medical physicals. So the $2,250 increase that the department requested was for those additional people that had been added in 15. I'm not sure about the mayoral reduction you were referring to. Yeah, it's got a comment at the bottom of that. It says 17000 Maybe that should have been 1700 What was the original request for that line, please? Uh, what was the account? 513-040. Medical. Medical. Oh, medical. Okay. Yeah, medical. <clears throat> uh, it's requested at 26 So it is 17000 I thought it was included. The FY14 was almost 15,000. It's 14.6. The FY15 to date is 19.265, and it's been cut all the way down to nine. You can see some history up there too. There's some of the code. some of those are encumbered POs from year to year, carryover POs. <laughs> I'm calling. <laughs> Nine thousand doesn't look sufficient. That, that, 
Yeah, that number doesn't match what we have for 14. It's 14, we have an actual 14,622. Yeah. <coughs> Original budget 23 revised. There's Do you have any notes on where we don't want to function at that level? I don't recall. It was when he was cutting. Okay. It is. It's not matched when he was cutting. Oh, when, we, when he was going through cutting. Okay. Can you explain that? Uh, we have 14 for the actual for 14, and it's got 26. It's just a different timing of. Uh, no, this is actual for 2014, mm -hmm. not 15. 622, is that what you're seeing? 14, Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the budget book, but up, up here it says the actual was 26, 066, 68. Uh -huh. I don't have any good ideas right now. It all came out of the same, same uh, software. I'll check on it. All right, yeah, can you check on that? Yeah. Back <coughs> That's good. Yeah. Could have been that maybe if one of them included uh, encumbrances at the end of the year, something like that. I'll check on it. Yeah, th I mean, at this point in time, I, I would think that budgeting $9,000 would simply be low. Low. Yeah. Yeah. That would be something we need to correct. Yeah. But if there's something we're not saying. Well, yeah, I, you, can, you can rely on that. I'd say that 26, you can say that's real right there. That's the real number. Okay. So 9,000 is not going to cut it. Yeah. <coughs> Where's the 9,000 coming from? That's, that's what's the, in the budget right now. That's what's in the budget. Oh. 9,000. It's cut. It's it's last year, 12 before. 12 the year I must before. have a different version. He might want to. What's your name? I, mine is what was uh, submitted to find. It's my requested. submission to find it requested. Yeah. yeah, I see that it was 12 and then 26 and then 19. So. 20 seems closer, 20, 23, something like that, closer than 9,000. It was $4,000 and that was in 13. In 13. I was looking for a big, big, big. You see, the biggest line items was is four four thousand dollars for physicals. Physicals back in uh, September thirteen. Are they required to have annual physicals? Yeah. Well, some some are, depending on your age. If you're over forty, it's annual. If you're below forty, it's every other year. So every every well, that'd be every two years, right? Semi. Sort of like the eye exam for your license every other Semi time. or bi. I always get this mistake. Semi. <laughs> Every two years. Okay. Right. Well, at this point in time, I wouldn't show a number for you know, for a change yet, but uh, Definitely let's revisit. The revisit list. I think this is vehicle no, maintenance, 534 308. 534 308. It's on page 36. Yes. Vehicles? Yes. Your um, question. The year to date and the actual are already about 20,000 higher than what we're, we have budgeted for 16. The year to date, I mean, the actual for 14 was 117,000, a little over. The actual for 15 is already at 118, estimated to be closer to 130, and we're budgeting 100,000. Is there something that's changed that's going to reduce that maintenance cost? Keith, can you show me what the, I don't have what the mayor's proposal was. Uh, what was the account again? Vehicles account, which it's is five three four three zero eight. <clears throat> bring that up on screen now. 
Yeah, it was, it was yep. cut for, uh, by 20. Yeah. So the request was 1.4, which was is in line with the, the historic. Well, yeah. What was your request? The request was 120, which it's been 120 for the last several years. And it's spent already 118? Mm-hmm. What should be 120? We're expecting, and 14 was, we're expecting somewhere. almost 130 <laughs> in the projection. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's been 120. Yeah, the FY14 was closer to that. Too. Enough. Oh. Just, uh, can I ask a, a general question? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> There's no need. There are no generals here. <laughs> The current oh. S -chip. Uh, S -chip. <laughs> after the after the mayor's budget, after the mayor reviews the budget, I I'm not a I'll ask the question. Does the department heads get their budgets his budget back to compare and see where the differences are? Um, all of the adjustments are shared, you know, with, with the departments. And the department heads say yay or nay that they can adjust their budgets to fit. <laughs> there, there was some the no, no, feedback no, on no, what, no. what, what, no. uh, what interaction is <laughs> with the department heads on the Sorry. adjustments. That's not how it works. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said they were provided. Oh, not right. Yeah, they were yeah. provided. Okay. But, but they don't. They don't. They don't say yes or no. I mean, there's no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But there's, there's no. No. Neither. Thank you very much. Um, no. I wanna, hold on. I, okay. I want to stay on vehicles for one second. Okay. Can you categorize the costs that go into that maintenance line? What, what are we talking about? It's um, it's it's all it's all of the maintenance for all of our apparatus, and including staff vehicles and apparatus. It's it's all general repairs, preventive maintenance, uh, DOT inspections. Um, accident repairs. Pump testing is coming to something else. Okay. So it's 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 every repair to every piece of rolling stock we have. So both regular and preventive and maintenance. And preventive and unforeseen. Right. Do deductibles fall in there too? For uh, our insurance purposes. Yeah. So general. What happens is we pay we pay out of our budget. Mm -hmm. And then the insurance proceeds go into the city's general fund, and if I want to recover them, I have to come before council to ask for that to be reinstated. Which there's there's one coming your way in the next couple of weeks, we just for that. Plug, plug. Yeah, oh, plug, yeah, plug. That's right. right. So, so that means you that would be add to what you the 118 that you're coming to us for. Um, I think if it would include it actually reduces. I think yeah. Cuz the money would be going back into that line yeah. from the insurance it's coming for, it's, it's already come out of my budget. Oh. And I, and, and, and I and I will in order to finish the rest of the year. You need to have it back. I got to have it back. I, that's why I don't <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the other thing we have to remember is this doesn't go when we have a, when there's a pumper problem or something. It doesn't go to grease monkey. Right. These are specialized pieces of equipment that have to be serviced by certified people. Our department. So yeah, and this you, year, you can't um, apples like you can't com compare these to, don't to, go to Jiffy Lube. another. Yeah. <laughs> in a, in an attempt to, to control cost, this year Chief Scott and his staff, uh, we we went to procurement, worked with procurement, and went out to bid for a service contract. Uh, where we asked for various vendors to come by and give us their very best rates for repair and, and service, and so we have we've really honed in on what the number is and done the due diligence trying to go out and make sure we're getting the very best uh, bang for the buck. If you will. And that number came at 120. Yeah, and um, in the last couple of weeks we've had several serious repairs that we're going to have to make, which are going to put us over our budget. So we're going to we'll, we'll talk about it between now and the end of the year, I'm sure. That should be revisited to 120. Revisit. Yeah. Yes. Can you put that on our list? Yes. Somewhere. Somewhere. Could you speak for a moment about the maintenance and inspection of the non-specialized vehicles? 
Yes, we use local vendors for that. Uh, uh, help me, Darren. Who does our light duty uh, Clyde's uh, over up on the, on Route 13? Does our oil changes and preventive maintenance uh, repairs? Good choice. Yeah. Very good. He, tr he he he's he's the type of uh, local vendor that you really want to develop a relationship with, because every now and again we'll get an invoice that says, "Thank you for your for your business," and he writes it off. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where was that again? He knows his stuff. He does. Yeah. He, he, he treats us very well, yeah. <laughs> financially and as it relates to repairs. Thank you, Clyde. Oh, there's the advertisement on the side. You see our vehicle sitting up there. It's like a built up thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Two lines, they're right together on page 38. Uh, travel and training, 555, 503, and 504. Both yes. of them have a comment that um, basically you're holding steady. Yes. But if you look at the budget and number, it's not. There's a $4,000 uh, reduction in travel and a $4,000 reduction in training. In the end number, uh, um, the there's no they, comment that they were made at the mayor's level, but I'm guessing that's what happened because there wasn't one for the previous one either. So, and those seem those numbers seem fairly consistent. Um, and these, what goes in there is that that's required um, training. Your it's job. it's everything except for the uh, paramedic uh, college uh, stuff uh, that's optional but it's how we've been recruiting and retaining paramedics is training from within mm -hmm. um, if that gets redu reduced then we won't be able to well, well we'll do the best we can with what we have but you likely would have to cut the um, scholarship or the college mm -hmm. reimbursement for mm -hmm. I'll just say this, to that point, we just put a whole lot of money into the salary study and, and adjusting to that and adjusting salaries to work towards the retention effort. And to see $4,000 for little things like that or $8,000 between the two lines start to thwart that. I know it's got to come from somewhere. I know we don't have everything we need. We never will. But we have have to think about where we take those things from, and whether it's what it does to morale and our retention efforts. And the the training, making sure that we have the mandatory training obviously comes first, and, and not all of that's offered here. A lot of it is travel. You have to go somewhere else for the train, am I correct? Yes, some of it. Especially the leadership training. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we could put those on the revisit list as well. I'll make a note of the amounts. generated from the uh, educational space at 68? General, the, gen the short answer is no. Uh, generally, that is a public space. And we, we allow folks to use it as a public space. Um, but most of the people that use it are not charging for their class either. So we're, we're not allowing them to use it as a revenue generator and giving them free space. But uh, generally speaking, it's a, we, we use it as a public space and, give, and grant access as such. From the community side, yeah. Yeah, and, and from the professional side as well. Okay, that, that was my question as well. If they're charging for the, uh, for the course, then are you charging for the space? Well, we, we don't have a mechanism in place to do that yet, but we also haven't had to face that problem yet. So. 
peaking of that. Are we collecting for reports now? Uh, as it relates to um, um, the insurance company requests for your run reports. Um, we are not charging as it relates to a routine matter of getting a fire report or an EMS report. However, we, as it relates to public information requests from from lawyers' offices and and other, uh, except except the patient or the homeowner, um, they get charged based on our Public Information Act request uh, form. What about uh, insurance companies? Insurance companies, they, they would fall under the Public Act, Public okay. Information Act request. Okay, because we put that line in there, I didn't even see it this yeah. time. But generally, generally we give we give the patient and we give the homeowner if it's a fire report. We give that to them for free. It's okay. a couple of pages. It's not. Okay. And the last question I have is on the last line for equipment. 577030 doesn't have any history, so it's obviously a new line, but the comment says increase based on assessment and recommendation from IT department. Mayor Ooh. level reduction 24,000, budgeting 12,000. So IT thought you needed $36,000 worth of. I'm guessing computers and that. 24,000. Well, if you add the 12 that's still in there and the 24 that re was reduced, it's 36, correct? Or is that? <coughs> the I, What's the original? The, 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 the mayor <coughs> um, went to IT, and IT presented several um, scenarios. Uh, different percentage cuts and based on their priority and what they thought would give us the, be the best bang for the buck for the use of the money recommended a new schedule for uh, computer for computers and that's how that cut, cut occurred like replacement schedule that's right from the replacement schedule and he <coughs> came up with a with a full bore and then the mayor said hey what if what if you had to go 20 what if you had to go 40 percent different scenarios and um, so it wasn't a cut across the board it was cut by IT based on need. Tweak the hard drive here, tweak the software there. Exactly. Or, uh, yeah, he evaluated it, it and did the best he could with the money that was allocated to him. He's good with that. We don't have servers that are on the verge of failing or running. We did, we did last year. John, do we have anything this year? No, we did last year, but that was one of our critical item requests last year and got, we got taken care of. Where was that? It was on budget. Yeah. It was on budget and we found money in. Where was it charged account? to though? Because there's no history in this line. It would have been our computer account. Because that was another question that I have that we have a this an equipment account. Rather I'm sorry, than it came out of our buildings account because it's because it was considered a server. That's part of the uh, heat and Yeah. Question. Yeah. Oh, the That's server the takes time. care of your. No, no, no. It was when, when we when we need when we replaced it. Yeah, uh, we had to do a budget transfer. And it was wrapped up in the budget transfer with the HVAC repairs oh, that we see. made. Oh, I Okay. Um, <coughs> before we start spending money out of that line and developing a history, could we maybe think about making that a putting a computer line in or something so we know that's for computer versus fire equipment? Yeah, sure. I mean, for us, easy. We have a computer line, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's very minimal. It's three thousand dollars, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or that was our request anyway. Yeah. Well, the problem is when you start. Sometimes you buy a computer and you put it in this line. Sometimes you buy a computer and you put it in this line. So yeah. you can't see what you've spent over over time. The history is not agree. there. I would agree. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions? Chief, do you want to uh, make your additional presentation? I would love to. Thank you, Mr. President. And if you don't mind, I will move up to the presentation board so that you're not having to turn your head back and forth like a tennis match um, <laughs> to see to see what's going on. Um, I will be uh, making a very brief presentation, and, I'll, and following my presentation, I'll turn the time over to Lieutenant Eric Kramer, who is who is currently serving in our inspections division, division and is a subject matter expert on what we'll be presenting today. I'm grateful for the mayor for the opportunity to present to council on something that uh, is very, very important to us, very important that we believe in public safety, and that's an initiative to create a fire prevention and code enforcement bureau within the fire department. I forgot to take the transitions out. That makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> 
simply put, this is not a new problem. This is a problem that is created as all over the United States as it relates to fire on a per capita basis. Basis. The United States is one of the worst of the industrialized world as it relates to fire fire damages uh, in, in, in in totality in the United States. Uh, we tens of thousands of people are injured, property losses reaches billions of dollars in insurance costs and property costs. Uh, and, and to be quite honest with you, it's it's uh, something that we should be paying more attention to moving forward. So. In, in our vision, we would like to, uh, to tell it that in response, we believe our citizens are asking us to be an all-risk and all-hazards fire department, fire and EMS service. We believe they want and deserve those, that, that to, to, uh, to happen for them. In order to do so, we believe we have to transfer our current model, which is simply uh, an inspector that does some plan reviews. We'll talk about the details of it here in a second. Uh, into a full service code, fire prevention code enforcement division uh, that, that services the citizens' needs and our business owners' needs in a little bit. Um, we believe that in doing so, it, it, it allows our, our, us to enhance our overall life safety for our citizens as well as for our emergency services providers. So, a new fire prevention and code enforcement division will provide the following services to citizens' business in Salisbury, specifically in these three categories, fire and life safety plan reviews, they are currently being conducted, and we, we propose that we continue to conduct them. They're currently being done in two different ways, and we're going to we propose to streamline it into one different, one specific way. The 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 thing that is not currently happening, which happening, which we want to happen, and I think that we really are in desperate need of, which we'll show you several examples of why we believe we're in need of, is the ongoing uh, code enforcement inspections of our commercial occupancies uh, in the city of Salisbury, and then. We uh, believe that we can, through these efforts, increase our public uh, fire and life safety uh, uh, education initiatives moving forward. We have a very good, we, we do a very good job right now of educating the public. We believe we can enhance that. Anybody recognize a three-legged stool? I used to build cows, yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the significance of the design of the three-legged stool? Anybody want to help me? Quite very strong stability. Yeah, according to tree, Chief John, yeah. you need all three or it doesn't stand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very strong in its design. It's very strong, and it's very stable. Um, and and it's so it, it. But however, if you lose a component, it doesn't work very well, does it? it collapses. This is a, this is simply a, 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 the use. It's an it's analogous to what the uh, the true fire and life safety mission of any organized fire department is and should be. And it has several several components. It has primarily what we all talk about is emergency services and response. But it also has in its, in its responsibility fire prevention for code, public education, and, and the other stretchers that keep the legs from splaying out as you sit on it or bear weight on it. The importance of this is I wanted to make sure everybody knows this is not something new. It's not something that Chief Hoppus invented as a new initiative that uh, the Salisbury Fire Department ought to be doing. It's something we should have been doing all along and for whatever reason over the history of our organization have not organized our efforts to be included in, uh, it w that we include ourselves in fire prevention and code enforcement. Questions? Yeah, don't oh. take that away. Picture. Yeah. Don't take it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be in the shot. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, I'm going to turn some time over to Lieutenant Kramer. He's going to talk about where, where's our current situation? Where are we today? Uh -oh. <laughs> That's not good. Eric? Um, I, I have a feeling on what the fire chief said. I appreciate the time to come up here and talk about this. Um, I'm a certified fire protection specialist. I'm a certified plans examiner. I'm an inspector. This is near and dear to my heart. This is something um, that I, I never understood why we, we don't do these things. Um, but hopefully we'll, with your support we'll start doing it. Um, this is just a copy of the fire prevention code. At, at some point in time, um, the city was inclined to adopt the fire prevention code. And it's adopted uh, by reference from the state of Maryland fire prevention code. Uh, we just never put the means in the code to enforce it. So we adopted the code and then that was it. We were just happy and we didn't do it. In the code that was adopted by the city, that's where we already have um, the authority to do code enforcement, um, make code interpretations, do the plan reviews, issue permits, that's already in the code. The city is already authorized to do these things by adopting um, the fire prevention code. Uh, the way we're doing it now is um, 
it's not working as good as it could be. Used to be. Uh, code interpretation, I talked about, that's one of the things that we're empowered uh, to do by the code. And we, in Bill Holland's office, gets requests for fire code interpretation. We get requests uh, for fire code interpretation. The county fire protection gets requests for fire code interpretation. The list goes on and on. Neighborhood services and code compliance gets requests. The state fire marshal gets requests. And it's very confusing. I can't tell you how many times someone thinks they're calling the fire department and they want to know, can I, can I burn my trash in the backyard? I say no, but um, uh, there's burning going on. So it's confusing. And maybe they want to ask about a sprinkler system. What's the requirement for a sprinkler system? And I have to direct them somewhere else. You need to call, you know, you either need to call the building department, you might need to call the uh, county fire protection. So it is, um, it is a stumbling block to get things done in the city. Even our new construction, we'll talk about that. Um, and sometimes something that we feel m might be for us to interpret, we might not share that interpretation with maybe the folks in the county or maybe even the folks in the building department. We're, we're pretty much on line with, with the building department, but it, it creates problems. There's problems out there. And I'm going to give you some examples. And this is a, this is, this is a very, there's a lot of very busy slides in here. Like I said, this is very near and dear to my heart. I live for this stuff. This is a, this is a memo that went out from the county uh, fire protection office in reference to sprinkler installations, fire sprinkler installations in the city of Salford. And what it did, it excluded Fruitland, Delmar, Heaven, everyone else has a waterwork system, uh, is not subject to this. And what it did was they, the, the fire protection division, I guess, had an opinion that our water system isn't as good as it could be. Um, and and this, was, this was all born back 10, 15 years ago, but it still remains today. In fact, the debate on the memo was just a few months ago. So what they do when we design a sprinkler system, we have to have a certain amount of pressure to make sure it works adequately. So we check fire hydrants. We open fire hydrants. We measure flows. A lot of magic that we're good at. <laughs> However, we have to add in the city of Salisbury to be approved by the county. We have to add 10. We have to subtract 10 psi. So if I open up the hydrant, I get 50 pounds of pressure. I have to show 40 pounds. What does that do? 10 pounds in a sprinkler system, take my word for it, is a huge deal. That's a lot. So what this does is it's ensuring almost every new installation in the city of Salisbury for a sprinkler system is going to require a fire pump. And they're not cheap. So if I'm going to build my widgets, if I decide I'm going to build my widget factory, and I've got to put in a thirty-five dollars or $40,000 fire pump, I may just go to Fruitland. I may go to Delmore, where I don't have to put in a fire pump. Now, if, if you take the time to read the memo, we can see that there's some adjusted space for, it, for retrofitted systems. Sprinkler system is a sprinkler system. Whether you install it in a building that you're building today, or install it in a building that you're building that was built 30 years ago, it's the same system. But for a retrofitted system, the county will adjust that number a little bit. They'll relax that 10 PSI. Um, how much of an adjustment? I don't know. Who decides that? Your guess is as good as mine. And that's, uh, I think we're all aware that the term selective enforcement, you know, if it's, it's kind of a big deal if I have to use the 10 PSI rule, but Chief Hoppus doesn't. That's, that's, I won't get into what could happen on that. And just one example on this, um, we've done two flow tests for fire station number two. Both flow tests um, show that it will support the sprinkler system. It's designed for that new building. However, when we deduct the 10 PSI that the county requires, now, now um, the city's going to have to pay $35,000 for a fire pump that we didn't know we were going to have to do. So I guess like Chief Hop said a little while ago, we'll be seeing you soon because we're going to have to buy a $35,000 fire pump. Help me again understand why we have to do that. I, I, I can the, well, this the 10 PSI. There was a time back in, in yeah. when this was first created, and it's been updated with <coughs> minimal changes. But when this was created, maybe the water system wasn't what it is now. You guys have spent a lot of money on the water system. 
it's a good, I can tell you, it's a good system. It's a great system. It's, I, I've fought fires all over the place. And I love, we got good pressure, we got good water, and we had an issue with um, Purdue. It produced our filling tanks, the water pressure to go down the city, depending on what's going on at the hospital. When I was been engineered, I feel like correctly the water system is this 10 PSI is antiquated. However, you can see from the date, this is this is a few months ago. Right, so if that had to be reviewed, who would we ask to review? Can I interrupt you for a second? Amanda, is there a reasonable concern for um, Comparing our water pressure to other neighboring municipalities. Water